All right, I think we got a, quite a few more in here. Thank you all for coming tonight to the Friday Kickley meeting update. So I'm just gonna make sure I have Cam as the host. And if everyone could mute. Pam, do I make you the host? So I hope you enjoyed the, the wisdom of the goose. I think that there's a lot to learn from that and how important it is to have a mission and a clear goal so um, we, can, we can move ahead together and encourage each other and empower each other to, um, with the right tools to truly make a difference all across the country and set an example for the rest of the world on how we as Canadians um, can lead uh, a new kind of revolution. It's not the first time this has ever happened. Um, uh, a revolution um, that is done peacefully with dialogue, and we can push back on the, the ancient powers that have always tried to take over the land from the people. And once we're done pushing this and winning this fight, generations will come after who will have to engage in the same battle. So we wanna set an example for how we can, um, we can take back our country in, in a peaceful way I believe it was in the 1600s, there was um, a revolution called the Glorious Revolution, and it was also called the Quiet Revolution. And um, it came down to dialogue. The people met with their, met with their leaders, and through dialogue, they were able to come to agreements that brought peace back to the land and freedom to the people. And um, the, the, the leaders of the time stepped into that and accepted that because they wanted what was right for the people too. And I think that we have to give our counselors um, across Canada an opportunity to make that decision themselves. We can't force them to do the right thing, but we can provide an opportunity to create this dialogue and give them the options to opt out of these programs. So I'm just gonna make sure that Cam, it doesn't give me an option to make you the co-host Cam. So I'm just gonna give you the reins and hopefully I can still share. Mm. So tonight I'm gonna to start with our agenda. And that did co go out in your Substack. Hopefully everyone's signed up for Gather 2030 on Substack. It's just a, a much better way to stay in the loop with updates. If you missed something on Facebook or TikTok or, or anything like that, then um, you'll, you'll see everything in your Substack. <clears throat> so the wisdom of the goose, it... Um, talked about having a mission and a purpose. So we're going to talk about our mission and purpose here tonight and the mission of Kickley. We're going to look at our um, public awareness video, which is close to completion. And we will go over updates from the council meeting in Peterborough. We did address our council this week and that went really well. So we'll give you an update on that and share share the delegation and um, what we are doing moving forward in um, following up with our councils with new recommendations and um, public engagement. I'm going to show you all uh, the first steps in creating a community action plan and what you, key information you need to gather. It should take you about an hour to gather this information for your communities. And that's gonna really provide uh, 
a good start for you to move forward and start planning the next phase. And then um, we will go over the map and um, of the UN directive programs and um, how we've been gathering contacts to create a database to reach our counselors en masse all across the country. And um, then I'll just finish off with uh, our schedule for the next week and upcoming events that you can attend as well as um, some different volunteer positions. Sorry, um, I'm looking for two, uh, two positions basically that need to be filled to free up my time. And um, I'll just put, a, put that out there and we will, we'll go from there. We'll move forward. I'm gonna let the dog out of the room. And we'll get started. Okay, so um, some quick announcements at the beginning here. Um, so if you have any uh, questions or suggestions, you can put that into the chat and um, Cam is gonna forward me anything that's super relevant to be addressed tonight. Otherwise, we'll gather the feedback and um, very much appreciate the feedback that everyone puts forward on how we can uh, make improvements and um, as well as we all have different knowledge to, to put into this project. So that is very much appreciated. And if you have specific questions um, or scenarios happening in your hometown, um, the Tuesday meeting is available for everyone. So there's um, a community support room that's open from 12, let me see here, from 12 to two on Tuesdays and then from six to nine. Um, so next Tuesday, I will be in Ottawa uh, and I'll be at an event from six to nine. So I will have the room open for community support next Tuesday from 12 to two. And of course you can always reach out to me through the, through the email and other cha other channels. Okay, so with that, I'm hoping that um, I can figure out hmm. Let me just see here. Pam, if you can just message me through text and let me know if I've got that set up properly. So you can make sure I don't miss any really important chats. Okay. It's working. Great. Um, okay, so we're going to start off with the Kickley video from last week. And I just wanted to say before we watch the video, um, we're so close to being done and we will be adding captions into it. So let me just pull that up here so you can all see. So we will, we have, um, we'll have main headings such as adoption as we move through. So each chapter will have a main heading that will pop up. We will have um, the, the the captions at the bottom and certain words will be highlighted and kind of pop out. Um, we're also gonna have a few visuals pop in. So um, there will be some things that are added after. And um, we just ran into problems today. I think one of the, one of the clips when I rendered it um, just kind of looped a little bit. So we didn't want to, you know, finalize with that last piece, but, it is very close to, to being done. So, so as you watch it, um, just keep that in mind and uh, your, your feedback uh, can be geared to, to things outside of, of that. All right. All right, without further ado, looks like it's not gonna let me open there. I hope everyone's going to be Let's able to preserve our this. natural environment while ensuring a process. I think what I'll do is actually play it off of here. 
because it comes up a lot cleaner. All right. So if everyone can just stay muted and um, looks like it's now down to a seven minute video. So here we go. Let's preserve our natural environment while ensuring a prosperous future for the current generation. Have you heard of the Partners for Climate Protection Program? In light of nationwide local issues, we hope Canadian Municipal and First Nations Councils will hear this message and consider our recommendations. In 1992, Canada attended the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development in Rio de Janeiro and adopted its agenda. This led to Canada's endorsement of the Paris Agreement. Since that time, we have seen countries being governed with direction from the United Nations, the G7, the G20, and ICLEI, the International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives. In 1994, the Government of Canada partnered with ICLEI to fund sustainable development programs. To kick off these programs, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities released a municipal primer on the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, promoting sustainable development through local strategic action and providing a blueprint for achieving sustainable development at the local level. Originally coined during the Brundtland Commission, the term sustainable development refers to preserving the natural resources for future generations and states that land cannot be controlled by individuals. The Partners for Climate Protection Program is a means of implementation, providing information for decision-making, aimed at reducing CO2 emissions through the transfer to alternative energy. Using ICLEI software, energy consumption and waste data is collected, and reduction targets are set to zero by 2050. Action plans are then produced for implementation, and progress is monitored and reported annually. A supporting rationale for the program is found in their joining resolution stating that climate change is increasing the frequency of extreme weather events and posing a risk to our natural environment, our health, our jobs, and our economy, and that Canada has committed to limiting the global temperature increase to below 2 degrees Celsius, according to the Paris Agreement. CO2 makes up 0.04% of the Earth's atmosphere, of which human activities may contribute 5%. Canada is the second largest country in the world comprised of 60% forests and home to only 0.5% of the world's total population. Despite the energy requirements attributed to living in a large, cold country, Canada contributes only 1.6% of all man-made emissions and remains a carbon sink. Furthermore, the Earth has natural cold and warm phases. Glacial and interglacial periods correlate with the Earth's orbit and tilt. And the Little Ice Age ended as recently as 1850. So it's no surprise that we are experiencing a period of warming. Computer models produced by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change have many shortcomings and should be scrutinized as policy tools. They not only ignore the fact that enriching the atmosphere with CO2 is beneficial, but also conflate the effects of greenhouse gases. CO2 is not a pollutant, in fact it is essential to all life on Earth. Additional CO2 in the air promotes growth in the global plant biomass and is profitable for agriculture, increasing the yields of crops worldwide. Lastly, it is difficult to attribute the direct effect of atmospheric changes to weather phenomena in such complex systems, and data shows that the number of fatalities due to extreme weather events has declined over the past century. Climate policy must respect both scientific and economic realities. This is best determined at the local level, where those who hold decision-making authority have a pulse on the immediate needs of their communities. Therefore, we strongly oppose the net zero CO2 policy proposed for 2050, Go for adaptation instead of mitigation. Adaptation works whatever the causes are. The Partners for Climate Protection Program claims to be free. So what's the catch? In order to reduce 100% of emissions by 2050, council time is required for review and endorsement of action items. Staff time is required for data collection, analysis, and implementation. And public funds and assets are required for implementation and additional fees if the net zero targets are not met. Sustainable development action plans can target mobility, privacy, and energy security, lead to costly municipal expenditures, and restrictions on home building and renovation permits. Official plans based on UN directives may eclipse property and water rights, as well as severances, and drive population growth to less desirable areas. Reduced growth in smaller and rural municipalities means reduced tax revenue and services to the majority of Canada, territorially speaking. After 30 years, we have seen the results as many of our small towns have turned into ghost towns, no longer permitted to sever rural properties, once in families for generations have been sold, primarily to corporate or foreign investors. While our cities face housing, drug and mental health crises, 
and prospects of home ownership dwindle for many. Upon reviewing the aims of sustainable development and seeing the impacts on the current generation, we trust our local councils share in our concerns and are looking for solutions. Meaningful public consultation is the basis upon which local councils are to consider their decision making. Instead, staff are being directed to consult with the Partners for Climate Protection Program and local NGOs affiliated with ICLEI, who then provide links online to surveys to pick our top three sustainable development action items. This is leading councils to believe the community wants this agenda, while delegations opposed to net zero action items may be denied. As councils now consider their decision making under UN directives, aimed at achieving Agenda 2030. This is not meaningful public consultation. Programs such as Partners for Climate Protection may prioritize policy from a global and not a grassroots perspective, and direct public funds and assets to private development goals and foreign investors, while neglecting local environmental, social, and economic concerns. Moreover, local integrity commissioners may be bound to these goals, meaning councillors who oppose the UN directives could face consequences. All while the Government of Canada and the Federation of Canadian Municipalities accept no responsibility for the programs they fund and administrate, leaving our local governing bodies responsible for endorsement and implementation of net zero action items. Thankfully, these programs are voluntary, and councils can pass a resolution to leave at any time. The council is the governing body of each municipality, or First Nation, the custodians of its powers. These powers are exercised through bylaws and resolutions. Councils have a duty to represent the public and protect the land from international lobbyist groups and corporations. Local residents want to support you in this role. Therefore, we recommend our councils direct staff to locate any motions to participate in FCM ICLEI programs and bring them forward for reconsideration. Canadians are counting on their elected representatives to consider these recommendations and the many people facing hardships across this once prosperous and livable nation. Local mayors and councillors, as well as First Nation councils and chiefs, are in a uniquely powerful position to restoring hope and true environmental stewardship within their jurisdiction. For more information and support, contact Gather 2030 on Substack. So you can see there's um a bit of a, a few glitches and a few words and accentuations in the voice um, to be worked out, but um, it's definitely, definitely getting close to where we want to be and something that's very shareable with people from um, both ends of the political spectrum and those who are concerned with the environment as we all are. and. Um, are just mainly concerned about the amount of interference, um, interference of international bodies in our in our local affairs, and um, so so that's uh, the video there. And if you have any comments on on how we can make improvements on that, um, we'll put it in the chat, and uh, we are compiling your feedback for the final revision. Um, is my sound okay? So Cam will forward any um, anything to me there. Hold on. There we go. We're just trying to moderate the, the meeting tonight so we can get through the material. Okay. Um, I do see two hands up. I'll, I'll take the two hands and then we're going to move on to the next uh, piece for tonight. So John and then J John Dunn and then John Gamble, please. Yeah, uh, thanks, Maggie. Um, I think it's really coming around to be a fabulous piece now. Um, I'm curious where you got the voice from. Uh, is that somebody live uh, narrating it now that you recruited? To do that? No, that that is a different AI voice, but we we will um, we can edit the sound and make it better after. Well, um, I think it's almost perfect now. That uh, that voice sounds very human. Um, one thing occurred to me, um, and I like the pacing now. It's uh, it's easy to follow. It doesn't feel rushed. 
the way it did um, a week ago, I guess. Yeah. Um, on the four percent, that just occurred to me something that I've seen uh, used before that um, I'd like to see edited in, and that is uh, when you get when you say that CO two is 0.04 percent of the atmosphere. You could put in, and I've seen this analogy before. the The Rose Bowl Stadium in Los Angeles seats a hundred thousand people, and folks have used that and said that um, zero point four percent is like four seats in the Rose Bowl out of a hundred thousand people. Wow! Have a visual of the Rose Bowl there, and they say, "Oh, really? This is like four people in that crowd." That's how big a player that CO2 is in the atmosphere. I love that. And I liked your your other analogy as well about, you know, the how CO2 is, it decreases, as the concentration of CO2 increases, the warming effect decreases. And you had yeah. said, it's like when you paint the red barn after three coats it doesn't matter how many more coats you put on it it's not going to change right the, um the the yeah the color. That, that comes from um will happer well known um, uh phd retired professor from i've i've forgotten now i think it's princeton but i could be wrong about that um another thing is that the greening part, if you can fit it in, I've been told that the in the last 40, 50 years, as CO2 has increased in the atmosphere, the green areas of the planet have increased by the area of the continental USA. Wow. It's like creating a whole new um, continent of green the size of the continental USA. That's that's a phenomenal increase, and that means less hunger, less yes. starvation, more prosperity. And that fits with why we see that um, extreme weather causes has caused less harm, because offsetting that is people are um, overcoming hunger. And CO2 mm -hmm. is the hero of that, uh, that event. It's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, John. I'm sure we'll get more things. feedback. We'll get more feedback from you later when we talk about me and John both spoke to Peterborough Council this week. So we will uh, update you on that. And, um, and John Gamble, go ahead. Are you sure you didn't have someone from the UN make that video? It is incredibly professional. <laughs> Thank it you. Is, it is really beautiful. Two points, if I could. Yes. If you could possibly include the fact that climate change is real, but mankind is probably the biggest problem, and it's because of our uh, geoengineering. Other than the fact that the planet changes temperatures all the time, we are screwing about with the with Mother Nature, and most people should know. You don't want to do that with a female. Pardon my sexist remark. But seriously, uh, you play with Mother Nature and she'll come back and kick you in the butt. And we're seeing that I mean, over the last two days, we haven't seen sun. I'm not making any solar power. Come on, guys. You, you want solar power? Leave our sun alone. The only other thing I could possibly ask for if somehow you could produce a five minute version. The reason yes. I say is that most of the councils have a five minute limit. And that is something that I would basically like to take to council and play the video. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so this is the first one we wanted, we wanted to kind of, it started off, I think a 12 minute video, mm -hmm. but we've condensed it down. And I think we, this is really good to be able to send our councils and for people who are doing 10 minute deputations, because that that is an option as well. Um, and and so we are going to plan on making various different ones after this, but we'll get the first one out. 
and um, and go from there. And actually, I'm was just put in contact with uh, someone who knows the the creator of the climate movie that just was released, and mm -hmm. so they may be able to take this and and reproduce it in various different ways as well moving forward. So we're kind of just setting the example and hopefully other organizations will will start to put out this information uh, well, I think as well. So. I think if you can get a five minute version, people can basically take it, walk into their local council and give yeah. it. I have yes. a pres presentation this Tuesday. Uh, our council decided after a request for five years, and launching a constitutional appeal, they're making one tiny little change to their deputation. Mm. And we're after a lot more. However, it would be wonderful just to go in and take that video and say, I can't possibly say this better than it's been said here. It's very non-aggressive. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful video, period. Thank you. You should be proud. Oh, I poured, poured uh, three, has it been three weeks now or four? And um, yeah, I was so close to finishing it for you guys tonight. And um, it's okay. It's okay. The, the, it was meant to be that we get this extra round of feedback on it and um, and we'll get it out there for everyone. Thank you so much. You There's definitely good. things we can, we can cut out and make it to the five and then provide all the background information on it um, in a package, as well as um, do an entire different video, just mainly on all the different climate facts, because I cut out so much that could have been added, right? So mm -hmm. I really wanted to stick to to the, the ones that were easiest to, um, to, to prove. That was basically common knowledge, easy to even Google stats, right? So that's well, what um that's where we're at with that one so i'm going to share my screen again and we will give you an update on on um how, how things went in peterborough this last week it was a really exciting week here in peterborough and so grateful to everyone in this area that so quickly stepped up and came out it was the day of the eclipse um i had basically looked at the agenda sunday night or sometime on sunday and i saw that the climate change action plan 2.0 pathway to net zero was on the agenda for the monday meeting at six and we mobilized ourselves here got ourselves on the agenda we um it, it was it was quite amazing so within 6.5 hours um we put out uh we wrote a report for council with recommendations we created a statement of support posted that on the Gather 2030 website and on my different platforms, um, created a poll uh, so people could respond just very quickly if they supported the statement of support. Um, also provided a PDF of that statement of support for our recommendations and people were able to gather signatures and bring them to the council meeting or email them to me. So I had that when I went in and um, within 6.5 hours, we had um, 2,620 20 views on, on the page. And the reason why this is important before I get into the response, we, the community feedback we received is the, the, let me not get ahead of myself here. I guess I am. Um, I guess I already did, but this report really wanted to, I missed a link here. The report we went in to speak to was based on the community feedback that they had received on 
this um, climate change action plan. So they had 55 people respond to their survey and 300 and around th about around 350 people look at their website and um, and they had done a phone survey and received responses from 500 people. And nowhere in their report does it say whether the people who responded to any of these means of gathering public input, whether they were for or against this program being um, implemented. So in comparison, we were able to pull in six and a half hours um, 2,600 views on our website. Um, we collected 101 poll responses in favor of our recommendations. We gathered 45 signatures on our statement of support. We had 30 people in attendance for the meeting on very short notice, and we brought in two delegates to speak to the issues. Um, we also produced a report I'm very annoyed that it's not here. We'll have to um, just jump around and show you because it's quite, quite a good example. There we go. Um, a quite, quite a good example of, this is an article I'm working on. Um, so, for instance, okay, so this was the report that we spoke on, and you can see it is, um, you can see the way that it's laid out. So, this is the kind of report our councils are used to seeing, right? So, I basically followed this example and I created a report of our own um, to to provide feedback on this report. Now let me just find that for everyone. Try and um, so this is um, an, an example of that. Um, so I put our own little heading. I gave us a name the Peterborough and Kawartha Grassroots Network. We can always change that, but um, you know, you can see I put addressed it to the mayor and council. Um, I have edited this since because I'm working on the second uh, a follow up report now. So this is you're actually looking at my follow up report, but this is essentially what it looks like, and um, and I I'm. Uh, I'm giving them the background of how this program came into the community, um, who it was created by, the local NGO, which is um, partnered with ICLE Canada, and that their main goal is implementing and tracking progress towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I, I compared their community feedback with our community feedback and um, showed them our statement of recommendations that we've gathered signatures on. Now, this is something that everyone uh, um, can do. It's a very basic format. And um, we're just gonna set that example for everyone on how to do this, right? And um, so this will be our follow-up report with everything that I stated, giving them the references for that. So it's not just, um, me stating things and not backing it up. I'm going to provide them with everything that I stated um, and the references. And then our recommendations moving forward. And I provide them with the uh, with the resolution to partner with the programs that are bring, that are working with, sorry, to partner with the NGO that is working with the Partners for Climate Protection Program. And um, and then go from there. So that's kind of the example of what um, the report looks like. And I'm going to go back to our agenda tonight. 
And before I get too far into this, um, after the wisdom of the goose, I did want to share, you know, the purpose of our coming together and the purpose of Kickley here. And um, I, I've written this up. It, it's from the Kickley Primer. But um, if someone would like to read it, um, Frank, would you like to unmute and read? Frank Plateau. Huda. Yes, thank you. I had to find the mute. <laughs> so Kickley seeks to educate our communities and councils on UN directive programs, origins, aims, rationales, and disadvantages, and to provide clear, reasonable, and helpful recommendations that empower councils to end their voluntary participation in these programs. Wow, that's clear great. and simple. Yep. Nice and simple. Okay, thank you. Thank you for reading that. I wanted to do that at the beginning and got a little ahead of myself. So, so this is an example. Uh, this is our Friday night, or sorry, our um, Monday night council meeting. I am going to speed it up because it's 15 minutes and I don't want to take all of our time. So I'll just speed it up a little bit. So if you want to sit back and um, just watch, um, if you haven't watched it before, it'll be extra interesting. And if you've already watched it, I apologize, but we do want to um, just keep everything, uh, make sure we're all on the same page moving forward. First of all, we have delegations on climate change action plan. Can everyone hear that? Okay. And if everyone's just muted, we're good to go. I would ask uh, Maggie Braun to come forward first. Maggie, please. Welcome. Just speeding it up to 1.25. Welcome to five minutes. Uh, if we could have your name and address uh, for the public record. Uh, we now have a new fancy timer. You'll have five minutes. At the end of four minutes, we'll let you know if there's one minute left. Please uh, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be back. My name is Maggie Ward for Peterborough. So I'm here to speak on the climate action plan, um, the agenda item, climate action plan 2.0, a pathway to net zero. Um, last June, I came to address the council's environmental committee report and gave a brief summary on how agenda 21 was being implemented through Canadian municipalities, through programs that were funded by the government of Canada and ICLE Canada, as well as administrated through the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. And um, I presented at that time the municipal primer of 1994. It was basically a 40 page document that the Federation of Canadian Municipalities sent in 1994 to all Canadian municipalities outlining how Agenda 21 would be implemented through Canadian municipalities. So there is a flow chart. I had sent it to you all over a year ago, so you would have been able to click on that and see the flow chart that I was referring to. Um, well, since that time, that video itself actually has received over a million views worldwide. Um, it has led to many deputations of a similar nature all across Canada, um, strategic plans, official plans, as well as UN directive program implementation has been delayed uh, all across Canada in various municipalities. 95% of rural municipalities in Saskatchewan have recently uh, released a statement that they are no longer endorsing net zero CO2 policies proposed for 2050 and that CO2 is not a pollutant and, um, and that they are no longer endorsing those policies because after 30 years, they found those policies to be quite harmful to their community and to their community's economy. So um, this is quite a wave that is catching all across Canada. So tonight on your agenda, this um, climate change action plan was created by Sustainability Peterborough, a group that's been operating in Peterborough for, for a couple decades now. It is partnered with ICLE Canada, that's the International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives. Um, it's, and it states in their strategic plan that they are focused on implementing and tracking progress towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in our community. 
So unfortunately, the United Nations has basically lost its credibility among the nations. Um, it, it's, its goal this year was rebuilding trust, and that's because it's lost trust of the people. Um, six states in America have recently passed resolutions making it illegal for any level of government within their state to participate in UN programs or have any dealings with affiliate organizations such as ICLEI. So here in Peterborough, since that time, um, we've began to create a network of our own and we are focused on ensuring that the sustainable development policies of Peterborough and Peterborough County, as well as Kawartha, um, do not unnecessarily impoverish the current generation or the enjoyment of the natural environment for our generation. And this network um, has determined that there is a significant lack of scientific evidence um, to justify the property tax increases and the municipal expenditures for greenhouse gas reduction targets and action plans aimed at achieving near zero CO2 emissions by 2050. So the Gather 2030 newsletter, it just started out as a newsletter, it now has close to 4,000 subscribers and it's based here in Peterborough. Um, at 11 a.m. today, we released a poll um, on our recommendations that are before you. And we received um, 100, uh, around 100 people responded to the poll that they support the recommendations that we are putting forward today. As well, we collected signatures and received about 30 signatures on our statement of support for these recommendations. As well, we have about 25 people in the audience tonight supporting the delegations, both mine and the one after me. So um, I'll just quickly go over this. It is before you. How much time do I have? There isn't an actual two seconds. Okay. Basically, we'd like to delay and defer the approval of this plan as well as agree to meet um, with our with our networks council and we will host a workshop for the mayor, the council, the staff, both here in Peterborough, but also for Peterborough Township and Kawartha. And um, we will put on that workshop for you at your convenience and um, allow this debate to be had because basically, you know, only 0.3% of published scientists have stated in their papers that, CO that climate change is mostly man-made, the recent warming. And CO2 truly, it is 0.0% sorry, 0.04% of the Earth's atmosphere, of which human activity is responsible for about 3% of that. Ms. Braun, your time is up. Canadians only contribute 1.6 to that. So if you put in Peterborough's con contribution into the calculator, you're gonna get zero for CO2. So aiming for net, so I'll let the next delegate speak because he'll speak to the thank, thank you very much for your presentation. There could be some questions for you. Any questions for Ms. Braun? No, thank you very much for your presentation again. I now ask uh, we would welcome John Dunn. Mr. Dunn, please. So I just wanted to say quickly before we watch John's um, presentation, the reason why I didn't go straight for opting out of the Partners for Climate Protection Program is because I really wanted to first introduce the fact that there is a significant um, pushback in the community and community support for opting um, for opting out of the uh, climate change action plan, uh, sustainable development, sorry, sustainable Peterborough partnership. And um, it was very interesting researching how the NGO Sustainable Peterborough began. It began about 30 years ago in Peterborough. I guess it, it says in their background information that they started with as, as a group of residents who met once a month for breakfast and just thought of ways on how to influence the um, 
those in the elected positions to, to take on the sustainable development goals. And what they did was they hosted a workshop and invited the mayor and the council and the counties, um, the county and the First Nations to the workshop. And that's how that initial partnership formed. So I thought in order to reverse engineer this this partnership, it's it's a lot to ask for them to just cut off their ties just to a group that they've been connected with for 30 years. At the very least, we want to start the dialogue and start to have a seat at that table and then form that partnership. And of course, as as we get stronger and our recommendations get clearer, which they will in our follow-up letter, um, it's gonna really get them to think, okay, yeah, we need to we need to put a pause on on pushing this net zero by 2050 agenda. And um, so I think that that was kind of the right play. And there was a lot of things I couldn't get to, but thankfully John came in and he did speak to to um, many of the points that um, needed to be stated as far as um, as far as um, the expenses and and um, other scientific pieces to that. So um, I will share John's presentation now. John, if we could have your name and address for the public record, five yeah. minutes for your presentation. At the end of four, we'll give you the one minute warning. Please proceed, oh. sir. Yeah, I'm John Dunn. I live at nine Claudette Court in Peterborough. Proceed, Mr. Dunn. Um, I only learned about this agenda item early this morning. So I didn't really have a lot of time to prepare on what to say. But um, previous speaker, Maggie and I, came before this council on June 26, last year. And I would have thought our presentations, maybe we weren't, you weren't convinced that we were telling you the right things, but it showed extreme interest in these topics. And yet, less than a month later, without anybody talking to us, you hire Sustainability Solutions Group. You launch on a whole project to advance the climate change scary agenda. And they have a public process. But nobody says, hey, Maggie, hey, John, would you like to participate? You invite, they invited people to uh, participate and have input, and they got input from 50 odd people. I didn't see a single advertisement that this was going on. Is it not fair to say when somebody as a citizen comes forward and presents to you, takes time to come here, they ought to be told. I think it's outrageous what's going on. I don't know to what extent you guys, you councillors are responsible for that or it's the senior administration that are running that agenda. But it's very, very, very disturbing. And we have a report here that ends up saying there are no cost implications. Mr. Pakodakos moved for free. Mr. Byrne worked for free. The other staff members that have input, do they all work for free? The city hired Sustainability Solutions Group. No indication of a cost for that. These things are costly. And the work that these people have been doing for the past several years, at no point do they address the cost implications of these policies. You claim to be concerned about the cost of housing and homelessness in our community. And yet you're promoting policies that are gonna make it harder and harder and more costly to produce any housing. All of this agenda is designed to make it more costly to carry on the lifestyle that the citizens of Peterborough enjoy today. All in the name of 
well, we have to do it to save the planet. All of this assumes that there's no questions to be answered, no scientific questions to be answered. Nobody ever says, how do we know that reducing carbon dioxide is going to help reverse climate change? Carbon dioxide is a colorless, odorless gas. It's almost nothing in the atmosphere. It's been as much as 15 times higher in geographic time than it is today. And uh, the animals and plants of the day flourished. They were not ruined by that. It's time that the community looked at these real costs. And is this reasonable? You approved a tax increase of ballpark 7.5%. Would have been 9.5% if you had not shifted some of the residential tax burden to commercial tax. I'm astonished that you don't take responsibility. You don't look at these policies. You don't ask yourself, what's the evidence? China is well known to be building about 90 coal-fired plants this year, in the next 12 months. You believe that carbon dioxide when it goes into the atmosphere, it stays in a funnel above the place that it's produced? Or does it spread around the planet? Does the Chinese impact mean anything? Does that affect it, something? Whatever Peterborough, if we collectively committed suicide tomorrow, so we can uh, present, added no greenhouse gas in the future, that impact would be wiped out by China in 15 minutes. This is ridiculous to be spending money on this. Mr. Dunn, your time is up. Thank you very much for your presentation. There may be some questions. Questions for Mr. Dunn. Uh, Councillor Chico, please. Uh, hello, Mr. Dunn, how are you? Um, I, I just am curious what your background is in science. Thank you. Well, my Mr. Dunn, please, through the, is, through the chair. What's that? Mr. Dunn, oh, please. Yep. Through uh, Mr. Chair. I don't have specific training in science, but I don't think you need to be a trained scientist to evaluate facts. I have a collection of books on the climate change issue, probably 20 or 30. I've watched hundreds and hundreds of hours of uh, presentations by climate scientists, physicists, world-renowned physicists, Nobel Prize winners, who have also all explained the problems with what we're being told. If you, if you wanna see some of it, people should watch Climate Change, the movie, just released on March 21, where several world-renowned scientists talk about the reasons not to be doing what you are doing. I think intelligent citizens should be listened to, people who are prepared to explain, have looked at the facts. And I'm surprised that a lot of people say, oh, we're only going to listen to somebody who comes in here with a PhD in quote climate science. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dunn. Is there any further questions for Mr. Dunn? Any further questions? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dunn. Thank you. We now, just to remind everybody, there is no clapping, booing, heckling uh, in the council chamber. If you want to uh, wave your hands, uh, with a presentation you particularly like, you could do that, uh, but uh, there's nothing else uh, that you can do in this chamber. I would now ask uh, Jenny Davis to come forward, please. So we had a very short time to prepare for that one. I think it went very well and 
just wanted to share um, my gratitude for John for for being there on short notice. I called him in the morning and I told him what was on the agenda and we had our deputation requests in by 11 o'clock and we were at the council chambers by six and so grateful to everyone who came out. Uh, I think that there was actually 30 people that came to the chambers and what was great about that night, everything lined up so well. There was a, a, a big contentious issue on the agenda for the community, um, and it had to do with the pickleball um, tournament, as well as um, some other key issues happening in our community um, to do with uh, feeding the homeless, and um, the, the chief of police was there reporting on um, their program to work downtown Peterborough and, and clean up the crime downtown Peterborough. So it really showed how many issues are happening in our town um, that need to be addressed. And the pickleball people were there and we had, so there's in Peterborough, we have about 30 people can fit into the council chambers. The entire overflow room was full as well as the lobby downstairs. So everyone um, got to see these presentations and it, it was really great. And I heard feedback from the overflow room. Um, some of our people were able to get into there. Most of them were down in the lobby. Um, they were saying that like most people were just like, wow, yeah, what she's saying is true. What they're saying is he's saying is, is true right on. So it really got um, a lot of publicity that way. And I haven't seen... Um, any articles written about it. I did see that question come in. So um, if anyone in the area would like to write a letter to the editor or anything like that, um, we will get to a place where we can start doing uh, press releases about this as well when we go in. So um, that will up our chances in getting in there and reaching out to the more independent media here in Peterborough. Um, any thoughts, John, on the presentation or if you were in Peterborough there, um, if you came to, out to the meeting, we'll take a couple a couple comments, feedback, and um, share with you the next steps here for Peterborough and um, show you how to um, create an action plan for your community after that. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. And we'll get on to the action plan. Here we go. So, so I'm going to call on a reader in a moment. So if you would like to read this this piece here, you can just raise your hand and um, that would be great. So the way that we're gonna follow up with this, thank you, John, um, I see your hand up there. The way we're gonna follow up with this is by sending the council um, an updated report and, and follow up with them with updated um, recommendations as well as all of our references to um, the the facts that we stated and and um, follow up that way. Also for the community here in Peterborough, we're going to release a new statement of support um, for very specific recommendations and and put a poll out so we can gather community feedback as well on that. And um, this is what our new statement of support will look like. Oh, it didn't come up. Let me just go here. There we go. Got a bit bigger. So recommendations to reconsider the Climate Change Action Plan 
and partnerships with Sustainable, Peterborough, ICLEI, and the Partners for Climate Protection Program. So they're all kind of lumped into one. We're going to go for it. And then we basically, our first whereas has to do with some basic scientific facts that we can all utilize. Um, the second whereas is um, that the Government of Canada and the Federation of Canadian Municipalities accept no responsibility for these programs. And these programs cost the Council's time um, prioritizing the aims of lobbyists, staff hours, resources, and fees, public funds and assets, rural population growth, mobility, privacy, water, and property rights, and threaten our food security and our energy security. And our third whereas um, points out that participation in sustainable development and net zero programs are voluntary and the Council of the Corporation of the City of Peterborough can rescind um, their adoption yeah. of the Partners for Climate Protection Program, the Sustainable Peterborough Partnership, Climate Change Action Plan, um, <clears throat> and the Declaration of Climate Emergency. So we've put them all together, they're all connected, and that our recommendation is that they reconsider, and I, I give them the report so they know the exact wording of that. And it's it's right there. So this is right on, on Sustainable Peterborough's website, which is great. Um, um, adoption of the reduction targets and communicate to Sustainable Peterborough the cancellation of its partnership and that counts and that the council reconsider its participation in the PCP program and communicate to FCM and ICLEI Canada the cancellation of its membership in the PCP program. So that will basically take care of it. And this is going out to anyone in Peterborough County can sign this and or click the poll um, showing that they support these recommendations. So that's the next step for us here in Peterborough. And I'll go back and John um, Gamble, if you can read. Obviously this needs um, a little bit of editing. I did have someone look at it today um, or yesterday and uh, I've made some edits since that time. So, so in order to do, to do this and to create a, a community action plan for your region, and I know everyone here is, like I said, you're a leader in your own area. Um, so I'm gonna give you some tools on how to move this forward. And what I think is important is for us to realize what we're up against. And we are up against NGOs who are operating in in our counties, in our districts, in our regions. And um, we need to parallel, we need to parallel them to some extent and have to have some legitimacy. So sometimes all it takes is a name <laughs> and um and and people who support your recommendation. So um with that, John Gamble, would you like to read um the Peterborough and Kawartha grassroots? network um, statement here. The Peterborough and Kawartha Grassroots Network, PKGN, has formed to ensure the recommended sustainable development policies adopted and implemented do not deliberately or inadvertently infringe or restrict on the Canadian way of life. Property ownership, single family homes, private car ownership, and individual travel choices and privately owned farms, as may be required by policy recommendations ori originating in or traceable to Agenda 21, adopted by the United Nations in 1992 at its Conference on Environment and Development. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the UN's proposal to reach net zero emissions by 2050 or any other international law or ancillary plan of action that contravenes the Constitution of Canada or provincial constitutions. And 
If I could just make a comment on your uh, presentation, Maggie, yes. or, or rather more on their reaction. That was precisely the same reaction we get at our council. And it's very quick to tell whether they accept what you say or they're just listening to you and getting rid of you. Uh, the first key item is, were there any questions? Uh, no. Well, if there was no questions on such an important issue, that pretty much tells you their minds are made up. They're firmly entrenched. They're not going to change their minds easily. In the second presentation by John Dunn, uh, there was a question which obviously is, you know, what are your um, bona fides? And that's a famous uh, stunt they all pull. Our mayor lauds herself on the fact that she has a, 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 let's see, a BA, an MA, and laced all the other councillors at the last meeting because they did not have her uh, bona fides from university. So th this is one of the use, uses that they constantly employ. So I would just like to comment that your, for the time being, your presentation fell on deaf ears. They don't want to hear it, and it'll end up in file 13. It so will... I'm going to comment on that. I'm hmm. going to comment on that. So when, when you're in the room, you you get to read the room, right? Mm -hmm. And um, as much as it seems like it fell on deaf ears, you're also able to look around and get a sense for where your counselors are at with this. And there are some counselors that I know just from being there and looking them in the eye while we spoke that are open to to hearing more and excited to see that we're getting ourselves organized. Because as much as they um, were quiet and didn't ask questions, in order for them to have the guts to speak up, we need to have ourselves in a place where we can back them up, right? So that they can go in there and say, look, you know, there's a thousand people um, you know, signing this resolution. There, there's a hundred people showing up at our council meeting on this now, and that will empower them to speak up. So I know for a fact from being there, three counselors, just from reading the room, are quite ready to have us um, get organized and push back, and that, and they mm -hmm. will support us. So Fantastic. my thoughts on that. Yeah. But as I say, it is going to take uh, petitions, the signatures for them to finally realize that, oops, our job's on the line. We better start doing something. Yes. But and it's, the, it's... the other thing, the other thing with this is, and I'll show you in, in our action plan here, <clears throat> going into the city of Peterborough is a lot different than doing has a different purpose than going into a smaller rural township in Peterborough uh -huh. County, right? Um, so Peterborough, when we go in and we speak from Peterborough, we're speaking from the epicenter of where all of this is being quickly implemented and where their council meetings are more widely viewed. And and I feel like going in to speak to Peterborough, it it it's like if you want to um have your you know create an echo right you need to stand in the right spot and shout in the right direction our speaking from that position that room echoes out further than speaking from duro dummer now if we go to duro dummer though that council is a lot quicker to want to get on board with us. Now, that can only go so far, but if we go and speak to the county of Peterborough and get on their delegation list and all the mayors and councils from the entire county hear us, you can see how each place will have a different 
effect, right? And um, along with that, we actually have um, two First Nations that are also, they have also adopted this plan. So, so we need to really understand what we're looking at here. Like this plan has been adopted by the city of Peterborough, the county of Peterborough, it's eight townships and two First Nations have adopted the Greater Peterborough Area Community Sustainable Sustainability Plan, which is administered by Sustainable Peterborough, which is implementing and tracking United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in our community, right? So, so when we lay it out and we have a look, we get to um, see the purpose of each delegation, which is why I I said certain things there that I did, um, letting everyone know that we are getting organized, right? And that we're coming for them and we're gonna put on workshops and we are we are going to open the dialogue for them and be clear in our recommendations. Um, nope. And John Dunn, and then I'll show you what we've put together here in Peterborough and how you can do the same for your areas. Okay, I guess. Go ahead. Okay. Is that over to me, or are you asking John Gamble to speak more? John, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I would suspect that your uh, delegations to Juro Dummer and all the small ones would be far more successful. And in a way, we, we have to start small. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could just imagine... 100 of the 388 municipalities going to Doug Ford and saying, sorry, Doug, our residents say no. He's got himself a major problem. And that will be the same thing with Peterborough. If you can get all the smaller communities to stand behind you and they go, they're going to carry a lot more weight. Yes. And just to be aware, all these big ones are firmly entrenched. Your mayor. Yes who I have not met, but all I had to do was listen to him for two seconds. He's right in there, 100%. Yeah. And so, what, what's great about what's great about the fact that when, when you lay them all out, which I'm going to show you an example of, the city of Peterborough is the one that we look to because they are so proud of what they're doing. And they mm -hmm. give you all this information right up front. They they post their joining resolution. They're so proud of it. And it's like really and, and very upfront that they're implementing the UN agenda. And like it's right on their website. So it's really easy to take that into a smaller township and be like, H -h -h and those counselors will they they say they'll say, we're not working with the UN. They don't even know, but you just show them. And and they're like, what? Mm -hmm. and you you're bringing the people, and you got all your paperwork there, and they're like, oh, okay, and they're quite happy to to let the counselors in the other areas know, hey, reach out to them, have them do a presentation. Did you know, right? And um, and to make it so easy for them, like this is your joining resolution. You bring that forward, you reconsider it. But we need to get all the counselors and all the townships kind of all up to speed at the same time in order to, to have them pull out, right? They need to pull out together and we need to do it with the people behind us. So that's the end and the First Nations as well, because they're in it too. By all means, keep it up. Uh -huh. John Dunn, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thank Just you. before I comment, could I ask John Gamble, where are you from, John? Uh, He's in, um, go ahead. Uh, I'm in River Drive Park, which is a small community in Holland Landing. Ah, okay. East Willenbury. Right, okay. Um, yeah, I'm more optimistic than you are about this, and I'm glad that Maggie felt that way. Uh, I wasn't reading the room, I might say, but um, Maggie's a relative a newcomer to Peterborough compared to me. I, I was almost born here, moved here when I was three weeks old, apparently. <laughs> and and I've known um, a number of these councillors for like donkey's years. Like I've known the mayor for 40 years or something like that. Uh, um, and the mayor is... Um, 
I don't think he's captured, but he's a politician. He's always been a lifetime long liberal. He was our provincial uh, member of the provincial legislature for about 10 years, I guess. And he was a minister in the Kathleen Wynne government. Um, and then he comes John, back. To John. The He's been on council for years. But something that you may not be aware of is after Maggie and I presented last June, an issue came before the council that they were they were inclined to buy, start implementing a policy to buy electric vehicles or con convert the uh, municipal vehicles to electric. And a proposal came up to purchase uh, some kind of uh, public works service truck for like 400 and some thousand dollars to be electric rather than a diesel model that was going to be 200,000. And um, they voted it down. Uh, they didn't go along with it. And the mayor spoke uh, pretty strongly that uh, it was not the wisest thing to do. It, was, it wasn't proven technology. So I suspect that Maggie and I had some influence on it. Thank you, John. John, you muted? Okay, um, we are gonna move on because it is Friday night and we wanna make sure that all these amazing regional leaders um, from all across Canada um, get the next step on how to really move this. We've learned a lot in, in the last less than a year. And if I was going to start all over again and, 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 be able to to jump right into this more more effectively and efficiently this is what i would have done at the very onset um first off you know the <clears throat> we kind of already knew that sustainable peterborough was operating in our town and just a little bit of research into them um like I said, they, their strategic plan is the United Nations agenda. They're they're giving us this information. They're giving us their joining resolution um, and their participation in the Partners for Climate Protection program. It's all right there. So the first thing I would do in in any area that you're from, I would Google um, the word sustainable with your region or area. And you will find an NGO that is partnered with ICLEI, most likely. Okay, they're mainly under that name. So find that and um, see who has partnered with them from the various county, from the county to the smaller municipal level to the city. Um, and it, like it, this is straight off of their website there. <laughs> so once you know who is partnered with them, um, I would lay out a spreadsheet and list all the different municipalities that are partnered. So we, here in Peterborough, we have the city of Peterborough, we have Peterborough County, and we have various smaller, eight smaller municipalities. Um, I'm still really working on this and it's very, uh, not laid out perfectly but I wanted to give you an example of that. And the information that you want to gather for each of these municipalities is their homepage, their landing page basically, um, as well as their address, their phone number and their email. This is gonna make it a lot easier to, if you just lay it all out at once. Um, the, the contact information, so um, the each each municipality will have a page that will give you the mayor's um, phone number and email addresses. So ga gather all those pages so that you have them because you're going to want to expand on that once you get it. Um, also the calendar and agenda page. Um, a lot of the times it'll tell you that when the meetings are held. So the County of Peterborough holds its meetings the first and third Monday of every month and that's open to, to delegations. Um, so you want you want to have that. 
you want to have there because every municipality is different when it comes to speaking before their council. So you want to have a link, the link to their speaking to council page, as well as um, most of them have pages where you can either watch the live stream or the recordings after, or they'll have a YouTube channel. So have all of that lined up in each one. And um, for me, it made it easier to go to the County of Peterborough and then they had a page that had a link to all the municipalities. Let me just find it here. Uh, I think I I think I know where it is. I go there. It listed all the townships on one page, so I could get to their landing pages right away, and then just gather that information. And it took me about an hour. So it didn't take long to get the key information that we needed in order to start the next, the next gathering of information. So step one, find the NGO in your area. Yep. Uh, ginger ale. Thanks. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, so find the NGO. Start gathering information and 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 showing that you know pulling out, highlighting um, how they're implementing Agenda Twenty One basically. Um, lay out a spreadsheet, gather this information for your your region, your county, um, and everyone who's partnered with that NGO, and then um, we can start finding the joining resolutions. And for instance, basically what I would do once I have all the, the, the clerk's emails, right? I would just put it all into one email, CC all of them, um, and let them know that you're looking for their joining resolutions. Now let me just pull this one up. There we go. So in Duro Dummer, the clerk there was fabulous. I reached out to her um, before my last deputation and she gathered up all the different resolutions starting March 18th, 2011, where, um, where Sustainable Peterborough, um, the Outreach Coordinator for Sustainable Peterborough and Liz Need, Project Manager, were in attendance to provide information regarding Sustainable Peterborough. So what did Sustainable Peterborough do? They started off with a delegation to provide information on Sustainable Peterborough. Okay, so if we're reverse engineering this, we're going in. We're providing information on our, our network, which is concerned with sustainable development policies um, affecting the Canadian way of life and, and, and doing presentations on the issues that we have with these policies. Hmm. And anyway, it goes on, but we can see the pattern. And then she highlighted their official joining resolution. And again, you can see that there are some whereases and wherefores and therefores. And um, now, therefore, the township of Duro Dummer hereby supports the vision and agrees to have the township actions included in the Sustainable Peterborough Action Inventory if they are already funded and they are already being undertaken and they move the region towards the vision, okay? And that the township sign on as a partner to the Sustainable Peterborough Plan as a leader. So this is what we wanna reverse, those words right there. And, and these whereases provide a great example for us to put forward 
in uh, and, and reverse, we want to look at look at what brought it in so we can take it out. Um, <clears throat> so what I would do then is uh, it's going to go to to the Kickley primer. And I'll show you in the Kickley primer, there's an example of the request that you can make. So once you gather all the, the clerks, emails, and you put their emails in to your, into your email line, and then you email them this request. Um, would someone like to read that? Example of request. The Council of the Corporation of the City, wherever, adopted a bylaw or resolution to join the FCM ICLEI Partners for Climate Protection Program in the year, whatever. Please provide the wording of that motion, the exact date the motion was passed, the elected official on file, and if possible, the corporate staff on the file. Very good, thank you so much. And of course, um, this can be uh, changed a little if, um, if because what, what seems to have happened here in Peterborough, instead of getting the townships to join directly with the Partners for Climate Protection Program, because God forbid, you know, the Partners for Climate Protection Program go in and do a delegation and explain to small town councils that they want to measure every ounce and um, kilojoule of energy that is being used in their municipality at the corporate and community level and every ounce of waste production and have their staff do that on a yearly basis, taking 300 hours of their time and to put that into their ICLE software to set reduction targets to zero emissions by 2050 and, um, and let them know that it's going to affect their strategic plans and lead to enormous expenditures and um, tax hikes. They would never do that. So they went around that process and went directly through NGOs in the area, right? Um, so in this case, in Peterborough, we need to change this. <clears throat> well, we can leave it in there. We, we would make two different ones uh, because they did adopt a resolution to join the Partners for Climate Protection Program while they're on the map. Um, it's a little bit confusing, but basically to join sustainable Peterborough, right, is what we would put there in the year um, 2012, I think it was here, maybe 2016. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm losing it there. Losing my, my uh, memory, it's all kind of coming together. Um, anyway, so you can see this is an example of the request that you would make to, to the councils and here in Peterborough, we have two um, First Nations that are also signed on. So we would also be writing that to their to their um, clerk as well. Um, so any questions about the gathering of this information? Because the next step is to draft your own um, resolution that you would be putting forward in each of these councils. So you would then draft your, your own resolution, um, very similar to the ones that we've put together here, um, so put, uh, putting in the, the NGO from your area in, in the, the, the spot provided, and um, and you would take that resolution and then draft your resol your statement of support and start gathering signatures. And if you can, create some online polls so you can get lots of feedback. And then you want to start watching the agenda. Um, 
and when stuff comes up, you you go go into it, try and create a team contact in each of the the different townships and um, and and First Nations, uh, Ben Ben uh, territories, and um, and yeah, prioritize your efforts. And I would I would also say too, like if something comes on the agenda and and you're not ready something will always be on the agenda this this agenda isn't going to stop until we stop it right so and and we stop it when we are when the time is right and when we have the people behind us and when we're organized and we can go in there calm cool and collected with the people with our signatures and deliver this so for here in peterborough I'm not aiming to have this done and over in a month. I'm aiming to have thousands of signatures by the end of the summer. So when this comes back up and also to, to go around and meet with all the different counselors that I can, to meet with all the different um, communities that I can and drum up the support so that we can have very clear um notice that we will be going in to speak to the agenda items and just really prime the area first. Um, and that's what our summer is going to be looking like here in Peterborough, that next time we go in there, and we'll, we'll go in and speak for sure um, throughout the summer, but each time it's going to be with another 100 people signing on, another 200, 300, 500 people um signing on to support our recommendations and um and that's that's how we're going to move forward here and uh with that i'm going to let um let me just see if there's any questions coming through cam So somebody asked, how do we find out which municipalities have received the info already? Unfortunately, um, I don't, I, I'm not sure how we would find that out. I don't think it hurts to um, bring it forward again. And I also recommend just attending the council meetings because if everyone who's interested in this initiative start going to their council meetings they're going to find each other and that will be a great way you know it's kind of like um a cute meme i saw and it was like if if there's ever a solar flare and everything gets shut down everyone meet at the public library at 12 o'clock on on sunday so we can gather or something right it's like with this kind of initiative from the grassroots there's people watching this all across the country so if everyone can just go to their main council meeting on and and find each other there then you're going to find each other and you can go forward together <laughs> so, so that's what i would recommend can we organize that tracking um yes uh um <clears throat> Sorry, I was just trying to read that that question. And um, that didn't come through too clear, Cam, if you want to send it again. And I'm going to let Mark give us an update on the, the map and um, council contact database. But did anyone have um, any quick questions about the first steps in creating your community action plan. And is this something that you think that you can, you, you could, does this make sense to others? And is it something that, that um, you could, you could do moving forward? Yep. Hi, Maggie, it's Allison. Hi, go ahead, Allison. I just had a question because I'm really just, you know, getting into this, you know, now there's um, the website that I landed on uh, called Partners for Climate Protection. Have you been to that website? Is that helpful? 
they show about, you know, the members and there's 500 plus municipalities and the provinces and territories participating. Um, have you yeah. been to that website? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And is that That's a good kind of... place to start to sort of just get a good idea of what's, you know, to gather information from there? Is that helpful? Oh, I would definitely, definitely um, go and, and go all over that website. Okay. They have um, a workbook for each of their five milestones. And um, hmm. it's absolutely fascinating. Um, I've printed it off myself and I've gone through it and highlighted it and doing that in preparation to go back into Thorold, but also obviously it's applicable for, for the work we're doing, right? Um, the other thing that pairs well with looking at that website and and going through the wor workbooks on each on each of the five milestones mm -hmm. is I see it here. View, yeah, is to mm -hmm. view the uh playlist on Gather 2030, uh the, the Thorold playlist. There's five videos there. And um the first one is the uh first time that this came on their agenda. A, a uh, one of the staff moved it onto the agenda, which they're not supposed to do. Um, so this came on the agenda. There was a couple questions about cost. Councillor Jim Handley tabled it to the next meeting because he knew he what it was and he didn't he wanted some time to prepare. And um and then the next meeting there was quite a discussion about cost. And they they said instead of just accepting it, they would do a one year trial. And then, it's been, and um, there was also a deputation done against it at that time. So, which is fascinating to watch. So before we we even, before our deputations here in Peterborough, there is great to watch a deputation against the Partners for Climate Protection Program um, mm -hmm. before any of us were even clued into it, right? So it's right. beautiful history um, in that playlist. And then, of course, the next one is Councillor Jim Handley's notice of motion to opt out of the program and then us going in with our de deputations. And um, what's what's great to to listen to there is what are the questions that the councillors are asking? What are the answers that they're getting from the staff? Why are the staff not answering the questions when you can go and look at the workbook on the program and and answer the questions um so they are hiding from the counselors what this program really is and what it really costs and it's very evident and we have it on public record so what we're going to do in Thorold now is go back with a full report answering all of their questions and it's going to be very helpful for them and um, very helpful for all of us all across the country so that we can be the experts on this program and why it's not beneficial to mm -hmm. our municipalities. So great mm -hmm. question. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Maggie. Thank you. Yeah. And um, that would be a really good working group, actually, uh, to, um, as I'm preparing to put together that report, we, we will go back in there in about two months time. and. Um, I'll go in and, and deliver the report and speak to that. We are going to drum up as many residents as we can from Thorold to go against the um, the program, as well as bring, I'm hoping, um, Tom Harris. He's an accredited scientist, one of the, the, one of the best on our side, um, has, a, has an institute on climate science. Um, so I'm going to try and get him to do a deputation there. And he has a partner who covers the economic cost of, of climate policies. So we'll have myself as an expert on the program, uh, climate expert, economic expert, and 10 residents right behind us to just shut that program down. And obviously we have the statement of... Um, support for our recommendations, which hopefully we can get like 500 signatures on 
in the next two months, right? And and we'll put a poll out and hopefully get a few thousand people on that. So that's kind of tactical civics for you. That's how you shut it down. And we already have a council there just, um, you know, ready to opt out, somewhat on the fence, but tilting our way. And the rest of them, there's like a couple of them that are pushing the program. And it's really interesting to see who those people are and their reasons for doing it, you know? So I'm going to let Mark go ahead with an update on our, um, so, so go ahead, uh, Mark, but further to Allison's question, we, we actually, maybe, maybe go ahead, Mark, and, and you can show Allison what we've done with that map from the Partners for Climate Protection Program. Sure. What you've done with that map. <laughs> and we're all very great. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually not just me, though. Um, we have Sandra, Karina, and Heather currently working on this spreadsheet. Uh, I plan on actually starting the FCM spreadsheet in the next uh, few days and reaching out to the other volunteers that I have on my list now from uh, other meetings. Um, but yeah, so this is the, the list, uh, starting from east to west. I've, I've minus a few blanks. It's, it's been really trying. It's like pulling teeth. Um, they really do not want people to be able to, uh, contact, uh, the clerks or, or the council a lot of times. Uh, but it's mainly the clerks. Um, and I've, I've been finding roundabout ways of, of getting the information. Uh, anyway, uh, things to point out uh, with what you're seeing right now, uh, the ones I've been highlighting in red are places where I consider it a conflict of interest, uh, but uh, the, the, they make the CAO and the clerk uh, the same individual. Uh, it's in those places where you may have a little bit of trouble corresponding with your clerk uh, because the CAO's job from my understanding is actually to be the go between uh, the barrier between everybody. And I don't mean just us, I mean like police and all other municipal departments and everything else. Uh, if you look at their organizational charts, it's kind of crazy. So they put them, that, that job title has specifically been created uh, to put a blockade between everybody and council. So anybody that has, uh, a, a place where you have a clerk and a CAO as the same individual, you may come up with some resistance. Uh, so in terms of progress, uh, starting from east to west, uh, as you can see, I just, I have a few things to fill in. Uh, the ones in yellow are areas that were uh, terminated, uh, either outright or amalgamated into other places. Uh, Quebec, I have not covered yet. I'm not fully bilingual. Uh, if somebody uh, who is French doesn't cover uh, those locations, I will get to those after. Ontario, I already have a spreadsheet of information for, so I'm just starting to fill that in now um, because I have finished Manitoba and Saskatchewan and the Northwest Territories. Uh, I just talked to Heather. She said she's got Alberta basically finished, uh, minus a few different holes. Uh, and we've got Sandra and Karina on BC, which uh, I'm not sure if Sandra wants to provide an update or not. Hi, thanks, Mark. Yep. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Yes, thank um, you. Thank you, Sandra. Go ahead. No problem. And, uh, unfortunately, this has been a, a slower week for us. We had a, a few things that we needed to get accomplished. Uh, but uh, if the weather keeps uh, as it is, this weekend is going to be a focus for Karina and I to continue on. Um, I'm going to say we're halfway done. The only thing, um, and Mark and I chatted about this, in the uh, BC government um, information link that we're using to find the clerk's name, they're actually, the majority of the time, the clerk is equal to the CAO. So we may need to get some people to actually help with finding out who the actual clerk is as opposed to what is listed on this it's a, a database right of um of who the uh the um 
chief administrator and they, they have a different name, uh, something officer. Sorry, I can't remember right now. Um, but anyway, so uh, actually finding out who the clerk is, is actually going to require a phone call. So, that, you know, there's, there's uh, I, I don't know how many uh, municipalities and districts are as in BC, but I think it's actually going to, because uh, I mean, it, it takes a lot of research to even go on the site and, you know, you, you type clerk uh, in the municipal website and it's not there. So we're spending quite a bit of time actually trying to find that information because um, I, I think so, it might be. Yep. So what I would suggest is the clerk is basically when you call the city hall, that is the clerk. So just put in the city hall number and like you're going to get an operator and you say forward me to the clerk right and and that that's how i would go about that just to fill it in um okay so yeah and so the ones yeah. that i did call <clears throat> for example they had an actual reception and then i specifically asked can you provide me with the clerk name and they did yes so okay yeah i i, I do think that it's going to take pretty much a phone call for um, for every single one in BC because they're not very transparent with that information. So what I would, thank you so much, Sandra and Karina and Heather and Mark. Um, this is a massive undertaking for, for four people. Um, and certainly I think everyone can see from the um, information that I showed tonight about what it is that we need to gather. This is something that you can um, start start gather. You can see how this database is going to, to expand and, and grow and become um, <clears throat> quite massive uh, when it comes down to their joining resolution. So if everyone in your own community can start gathering that, that background information um, ahead of time, it's going to really help us organize at that local level, whereas this database will be used to communicate information to all the counselors all across the country. So it'll come from it'll come from both angles. It'll come from um, from a from a from a higher network, and it'll come from the ground up, right? So they'll be getting it from both sides. They'll be like. Who's sending us all this information? You know, fr from we 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 need to create a, a new name for a, a new newsletter that will go to all all the councils. It won't be gather twenty thirty. It will be a specific new newsletter just for um, our municipal uh, councils, and likely the the MLAs and MPs and MPPs will want will eventually be added to that too. So um so that's gonna be very, very useful. Um now did Karina or Heather want to give an update? I really appreciate what you ladies are doing and um and working with Mark on that. So Karina's with me and that's the same update between the two of us. <laughs> Aw, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I asked Heather if she wanted to provide an update and she uh, just said she'd leave it up to me because she'd already updated me. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Maggie. Um, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Terry. And yeah, then Monique. Sorry. Um, you know, I was just looking on the PCP on the, um, I Googled it. Um, where do you find the workbook on there? So if you go to their five milestones, um, I'll oh, pull okay. that up it's now. Okay. Because yeah. I wanted to give oh. it to Lisa Robinson because she's asking for the resolution. She just asked the city clerk because they joined in 2005. So, um, yeah, we want to start attacking that again because uh, we went in with, um, it was been a while now and nothing's been done with that at all. So we want to go back in and get another deputation in front of them. Okay. So here you go here. Oh, okay. Right there. Yep. So under program, ah, you see the okay. PCP five milestones. And I'd okay. love to do a, a presentation just on, on this for everyone. Um, so right. it tells you what, what 
what they're doing. You know, they're a, a okay. 45 reduction by 2030 and net zero by 2050. This is what they're aiming for. They won't tell the counselors that in the meeting in Thorold. They don't they don't tell them that this is what the goal is. And it says really? right on the website. Yeah. Um, oh my so gosh. They're, making, they're making it really easy for us to be the experts on this compared to their city staff who apparently needs them to adopt it before giving them information on what the program's about and what the tools are. It says right there what the tools are. <laughs> but, doesn't, but doesn't the CAO know that and the city clerk? They're just not communicating well, it to their... Um... They're, they're being very vague and not okay. answering the question. Okay, I got so, you. Um, I get it. So are so, they hired? Are they, are they staff? Are they the NGOs? Um, they are working with the NGOs or with the city staff directly. The so city on clerk. this page, yeah, on this page is where the workbooks are. So where it says one, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay. When you click each one, click here for full instructions to complete ah. milestone. Okay, fantastic. Milestone okay. one is all about. Um, they're doing the, the community and corporate inventory where they calculate the energy consumption and waste oh production God. from both your your entire community uh, and and the municipality. Okay. Um, so the whole workbook's there. Would it is it like a five hundred page workbook? Um, I think that this workbook, the first one, is only that hmm. uh, eight okay. eight pages long. Oh, okay. Um, but then a summary of the corporate inventory protocol. So this is fascinating because it is 70 pages long. It's not, not, um, it, it is time consuming. So when, in yeah. for instance, in Thorold, if you watch there, um, when they ask about the program, the city planner at the time said that it would help them, um, meet the provincial requirements um, because the province requires an energy consumption and demand report um, every five years and that report was coming due. So when I called and I asked Peterborough's climate, climate staff, how long does it take for you to do the provincially required report? He said, oh, that one's easy, about about a hundred hours, if that, and I recorded the call. So, <laughs> so it's really going to be good when we put this report together for them. And yeah. then I asked, well, what about the partners for climate protection program? And he said, oh, well, that's the big one. You know, that's about th at least 300 hours. And that one's done annually or at wow. least every two years. So they're not, so the, 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 the point is the staff in Thorold was trying to sell it to them like they would save money and hours by doing this program when it's absolutely the complete opposite of that. Um, and, and yeah, you can really see it gives you the yeah. whole structure here, um, all the different programs that are involved like this, this information is absolute, absolute gold for us. You know, this is just two workbooks in, right? Um, yeah. So the, that's the goes, so the people communicating that are the people are the NGOs that are brought in to communicate a the lot of a, a lot of the time in Thorold they didn't they just tried to slip it through the staff and they made a big mistake. Okay. <laughs> so um, they also have one here on. Um, yeah, I I think what we should do, um, and we will do as I turn my attention back to putting this report together for Thorold, we'll do one of the nights, we'll, we'll specifically, we'll go right into this and um, and we'll put together our own report on these programs. So milestone three is 13 pages long. I printed all of these out and just created yeah. my own workbook on it and highlighted everything. And, you know, if just by yeah. doing that, we're going to, so much more informed than the counselors and come from a place of really grounded knowledge on the program that they are being, that they're participating in. Okay, perfect. 
thanks. Yeah. Really good website. Um, I also am fascinated by the small and rural community action plan guidebook. It is a bit longer as well, but I, I think that it's important for us um, when we're speaking to our smaller municipalities um, to let mm -hmm. them know how this is being done and um, implementing the action plan. Uh, that one is six pages long. Okay. So, um, I don't know. Really Lisa was great. talking about some big binder that they gave them all, and it was about 500 pages. So, I don't know what that mm -hmm. is. I'll have to ask her. I'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. So, here you can get a sense of the cost, you know, hire a coordinator. Yes. Um, hire. <laughs> <laughs> all these people. Wow. Um, okay, so great question there. Thanks. And Monique, you had your hand up as well. Thank you, Terry. I believe uh, Monique's hand was up earlier. Still up? Yes, I was trying to unmute because my screen had gone dark. <laughs> okay, so actually you just answered my question because um, I was wondering... Port Coquitlam, where I'm in, has already reached milestone five. So I'm like, they're not going to want to back out of this now if they've invested all this time and energy and money into it. So mm -hmm. how do we get them to rethink or relook at this because they're so deep into it now? Well, because it's still costing them hundreds and hundreds of hours of staff time. It's, it's clogging up the um, the... A lot of the councils are concerned about the fact that stuff isn't getting done and that residents of their community are constantly complaining to them about the fact that they're trying to get stuff done through the city and it's not being done. And the staff are saying, oh, well, we're too busy. We're overloaded and, and all of this and, and so on, right? So um, when we go in and we, we, we educate them on the program and then they'll, 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 Look at the staff and be like, oh my God, like this is what you've been doing. Sorry about my language there. Um, hmm. you know what I mean though? And and the expenses that they're they're not small expenses. There's small, medium, high cost expenses being put through every every action plan, every strategic plan. It's like upgrading the municipal buildings, um, uh with the solar technology, upgrading the fleet to being 100% um, EV, EV electric vehicles and installing EV charging stations and putting in bike lanes and it just goes on and on. Um, one of the things that we're noticing is when we are looking at the financial records for all the municipalities, we found a website that has all the municipalities' financial records. We can get our hands on that. Yes, yes, I'll, oh. I have it there. I'm going to put it out <laughs> as a resource for everyone. But there's, I think it was over in Huntsville. Huntsville. Um, they spent over $800,000 on cameras. On what? Last year. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. But like we, when we go through, we can find where these expenses are. So... Wow. So, so they, you know, they're, they're upping the property taxes and they cannot justify with the information that we're going to be bringing them the, the increase in property tax at the same time as these municipal expenditures going to things that are um, the, the, the reason for doing it and the so-called benefit is absolutely negligible right so we want to just make that really clear and help them to get out of that um thank you monique mm -hmm. i'm you. just going to share the screen one more time we're doing much better for time this this time around um and i do want to let everyone enjoy your your evenings so if you haven't already please do the um, join the network. I need to update this form, but it really does help me to um, see who is uh, interested in 
in working together at the community level. And so when you go to that form, um, it'll give me your name. Whereas if you just joined Gather 2030, it's just a newsletter. All I get is your email. I have no idea, you know, um, what you're passionate about, what you want to, um, you know, where, where you're from. I, I don't have your name, I don't have your phone number, but this way I do, and it it can help me to organize because then this fits me out a spreadsheet and then I can organize it by township as well and find all the people that are in that township. And of course, this was originally created for Gather 2030 and, and I do um, <clears throat> put forward a lot of different initiatives on how we can be more effective at the local level and things that we we want to do in order to kind of re uh uh utilize all the this the tools that we have in order to be more effective in our advocacy and in our activism and um making the changes that that we want to see so um so that is is really helpful if you can fill that out for me I haven't gotten to organizing it all yet, but I'm going to get there. Um, I'm just going to jump down to here. <clears throat> so I am looking for um, for for a couple. I need basically two two people. So Mark's filling an amazing role. Cam is helping with things as well from the media side and to help me get a bit more organized with my computer files and um and and media media presence um moving things to rumble there's so much that needs to be done on that aspect of things so i am trying to divide up some key key roles and um i'm having a very hard time with the uh getting back to people um who are emailing who are potentially the people i'm looking for right now but there's i i need somebody who can basically um work with me uh and someone i can trust with my um with my emails that are coming in to respond to those emails and funnel them appropriately and um, ideally to have somebody that's a volunteer coordinator because I get about 20 emails, maybe even 100 if I look at the messages on the different platforms a day of people who want to get involved and are um, looking to help and to volunteer. But you can just imagine if I call each person that's an hour at least to to at least just even start getting to know someone um so if somebody has some expertise in how to coordinate such a massive uh initiative that's that that's really gaining so much interest um I'd appreciate that and of course I would um be happy to to make that a paid position because um, the the nice thing about Substack is it does allow people to subscribe. And um, I'm very grateful for the people who have subscribed and um, supported that effort. It's, it's helping me to see that <clears throat> I can take, I, I can invest the majority of my time in doing this work. And, um, and I think that that's what the country needs me to do right now and I think it needs about five of us um kind of taking on different pieces of that and I'm happy to make those paid positions and um use the the sub stack income as a base for that to make that happen so that said um if you feel called to to this um undertaking with me at that level then and you have the the skills and you understand the vision which is required to respond appropriately to the emails coming in of course 
um, please uh, send me an email to my personal email, which is my name, Maggie Hope Braun at gmail.com and put in the um, subject line, uh, let's say, um, help, help wanted in cap locks. Okay. And then just, uh, and then I will reach out to you because I need to really focus my energy on the people that can help me to, to expand this out. So more people can get this information. And it also frees me up to, um, dig into the, into these programs and, um, put forward the information for everyone. Okay. A couple of questions coming in. Um, yes. Okay. Excellent. And with that, I'm going to give you guys just a bit of a rundown on what the next week looks like. So I'll be available next Tuesday for community support, um, answering questions for local municipal for, for your work locally, um, Tuesday, same same meeting link every time. So don't worry if if you don't get a link, um, it's the same one every time. So just save that and mark the hours. Um, I won't be available for the six to nine uh, next week. And um, I do participate in the Take Back Ontario meeting as well as the Civis for Reform meetings on Wednesdays great initiatives there. I recommend checking them out, especially the Take Back Ontario one. That one's kind of open for everyone. For Civis for Reform, you do need to be um, vetted beforehand. So if you click that link there, uh, you can do the intake form for Civis. And then of course, the Friday night Kickley meeting will, will be um, going ahead next week. Same time, same place. I'm sure we'll have a ton of updates, it seems, every week. And I will be in Pembroke on Monday um, at the at Finnegan's Roadhouse. And they have a great group there. So we'll be speaking to the Kickley approach um, to UN directive programs aimed at Canadian municipalities. I'll be in Ottawa the next day, meeting with some group leaders there to share this approach and get this all into their hands in the regions around Ottawa, get them going. Um, Carl's Bad Springs, I'll do a presentation on Wednesday, next Wednesday, to the Citizens of Liberty Group, and another wonderful group there. Uh, lots of very, very active, action-orientated group. Um, and then I'll be in Havelock, which is a, a rural municipality in Peterborough County. So heads up, Peterborough County, if you can make it to Havelock um, Saturday, April 20th from 3 to 5, we're going to be putting forward Peterborough's, uh, Peterborough County's action plan for the summer, making sure everyone has the statement of support so they can get out there and gather the signatures um, and have all the tools we need here in Peterborough to um, create the public awareness around our initiative here in the Peterborough area. And um, the next big planned event will be uh, in Victoria, BC, May 28th. And really looking forward to meeting all of you from, um, from the BC area, if you can make it down. And if you would like to reach out to me to um, arrange some other meetings aside from that 630 meeting with Un we unify um i'd be happy to meet with as many of uh, of you at, as possible just we'll need your help kind of on the ground to plan plan those meetings and um and uh meet you all in person which i think is really awesome and important and um so, in august so we have a provincial so round just, table. Just one minute, Maggie. Uh, yeah. For the Victoria one in BC, would you be interested in having meetings set up on the mainland? Is it hard to get back and forth or do I need to fly? 
No, there's a ferry back and forth, but it's very expensive for everybody to take a ferry over to be to Victoria and then try and find accommodations and so on. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about that. I can change my ticket uh, and um, and see about about going to. That's a great idea because I think I probably have to um, do that. So so that would be in Vancouver. Vancouver okay. or Abbotsford. I'm out in Abbotsford, which isn't that far. There, people can come in from Vancouver all the way to Hope. We're kind of in the middle of that. Okay, so let's um, let's connect there. Um, could you uh, stick around just after the meeting, and we'll exchange some contact information on that. Sure. We're almost done here. Um, thank you. And yeah, we do a provincial roundtable at in Elliott Lake in Ontario, um, August thirtieth to September first. So um, that will be uh, an, a weekend event, and there will probably be a three day workshop afterwards. There's various different um, people that put on on workshops, including myself, that will um, be able to to expand on our work over the three days that follow the weekend event and um, really good thing to come and, and get involved with. So I think that we've made it to the end of the information to be shared tonight and um, really appreciate everyone for coming tonight. I know that uh, you must be passionate about about learning and getting involved with this to come on your Friday night. So thank you so much for that. I will post the recording of this meeting. I, I didn't do it in the past. Um, it was just a bit busy. And with the video that we're working on, I didn't want to, you know, release that, that too soon and let them know what our game plan was too soon either. So <laughs> we want to be sensitive with our information a little bit. So I'll I'll put it on the Gather 2030 website. And um, I'm a bit tired of hearing myself talk. <laughs> so um, with that, I think I'm going to say goodnight to everyone. And I really appreciate you being here. <clears throat>
because they're starting to get to be a lot of files and a lot of links and and information here. So, so this is what you're looking at, slideshow presentation or video presentation. Um, so I'm probably allowed oh, because presentation I'm the author, let me. It's on the uh, Gather 2030. Thanks, Maggie Braun. I have a. Just, um, edit. I if I can maybe screenshot it. Yeah. I'm just uh, going to make sure, see if it's set to private. Yeah. It says it's public. So I'll put the link there for it in the chat box. Would that help? Just to, and, and you can try that one? Yeah, sure. Okay. That wasn't it. There we go. Any other uh, comments like that? That was very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> I want to make sure that, that, that those links are working. Anyone else having any trouble with links? I, I'm getting a little bit better at um, double checking those. There was a few issues with that. Your team is doing awesome, girl. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Was that a question? No, I said your team is doing awesome, girl. Yeah. You're the queen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you know, this week we... It's so great. I'm getting calls from from really knowledgeable people in the First Nations community as well. And learning so much about, you know, the treaties and they're just so happy with the work that we're doing because it really comes down to the land, right? And, um, you know, if that treaty gets taken away and, and it, it removes all of our rights to this land. So they're helping. I think we all, I know for myself, I've had to ask so many questions and I feel silly, you know, because I, I just don't know, but I know that it's important. So I'm so grateful for them for um, sharing with me the that in a simple language right which is what we're trying to do with this climate stuff we're breaking it down at that grade two level like teach me right teach me and um and uh so it truly is a an honor to be to be taught um this the history and the importance of of our history when it comes down to protecting this land for future generations for all of us. So I'm, I'm looking forward. I was, it, it's really all coming together too. When I look at Peterborough and sustainability Peterborough and how it's not just our municipalities that they've partnered with, they've partnered with the first nations on the land too. So to know that part of this process will be, um, reaching out and engaging in their community and with their elders and um, leaders there as well. And to truly restore the relationship between um, the people on both sides of the treaty for our land, I think is going to be very powerful. And um, 
looking forward to that. So I thought I would just share that 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 was a, a beautiful development this week and has been in the works for for some time, but and that's awesome. You know, God says, ask questions. You are God's yes. children. You ask good questions, and we all mm -hmm. learn. And they are uh -huh. our brothers and sisters. We are all together. Yeah, we're all from the land. Yeah. Any Thank other? You. Go ahead. Someone. Well, I think that that's probably a good place for us to say good night. So I really, again, appreciate everyone here tonight and um, look forward to our next Friday meeting. You never know what's going to happen between now and then. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be another big update. And um, me and John will probably have that report. And, um, <clears throat> oh, there are so many things to share that I even missed tonight. We There is a resolution by Texas that um, they've passed it into law that they're no longer um, allowing Agenda 21 to move forward in their state. We have a list of several other um, states that have passed resolutions as well or have put forward resolutions and we are um, hoping to have a bit of research into that done. So if anyone is wanting to do some research this week, we have the, the states, we have the links, and basically what we want to do is make sure that this is double verified before we put it forward to everyone as a, as a resource. So, um, and just to be clear, is it a resolution or has it actually passed in the house? So if anyone has that information already, <laughs> um, please please let me know. Uh, either speak up now, let me know if you'd like to be part of a bit of a research team over the next week or so. Um, only if you have time, of course, because that's uh, that's what's required. <laughs> Everyone's valuable time. <laughs> and um, I could offer if we don't get time. volunteers, I can go ahead. I can offer some time for research. Okay, who is that? Sorry, I'm retired. <clears throat> Sharon Hurdle. Okay, wonderful. Sharon, could you private message me your, okay, there you are. Could you private message me your email address? Okay. And I can, um, or just stay, stay, well, no. Um, and then I'll arrange a call with you to, tomorrow if that's okay. Okay. Uh, what do you mean a call? Or or an email. By email? I'll send you, yeah, I'll send you an email tomorrow. Okay. Um, Maggie, are you wondering where, um, specifically just about Texas? I, well, I have Tennessee. Um, yeah, we have, I, I know that Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, Kansas, Oklahoma, Georgia, there's been resolutions moved in all of them. Um, I sent you a link there, Maggie. It's in Louisiana. I put it in the chat right. as well. What is okay? I haven't heard of it. I can see what I can find out. I have um, a friend who's in South Dakota, and she writes. She's she's successfully written policy. Um, for generally children's rights, but she's very knowledgeable. So I'll see what she can, what what she might know about this kind of stuff. Mark might have just found it. Hmm. Nine states have outlawed Agenda 21 to protect pri property rights. Is it giving the link to the... Excellent. Maggie, that looks that, like a, that's a 2014 article. Yeah, that's way stale. So you have to be careful about that. But if it's linking to the Oklahoma, like if it's, it's a ten year, to, it's a ten year old article. Um, second so, reading, first reading. These are 
it was that sometimes, linked to that 2014 article? Sometimes I know with Substack, for instance, I might publish an article and then update it, right? So sometimes it that's the original publishing date. Um, but it looks like I know I I, I get ahead of myself, don't I, John? <laughs> he was like, "Be careful, don't put it out there unless you know." <laughs> Um, well, it's a lot of work, uh, and I don't have time to do very much of it myself, but um, if there are researchers, we really want to find out all the states that have passed things. The one that got publicity that you haven't mentioned is Louisiana. I'm sure I heard um, yeah. a law was passed in Louisiana sometime in the last six months. Okay. Uh, that was uh, very, very uh, strong. Right, you for me. Just a second. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, so you guys can see kind of what we're looking at here. I'll put this in the chat too, if anyone wants to use this as kind of a, a base to start some research. And and basically, if, if you are looking into this this week, um, it'd be really awesome if you um find this is really old we're basically no. looking for texas it says it in the chat. if there's updates it might show the old date when gotcha. let's say that i'm just gonna mute um i'm gonna put the different uh dates in here we're looking for the the resolutions from these states and if they are for surpass, M I S S I S S I P T I. Thank you, childhood home. Well, were they as Maggie? It's not a, a resolution. I guess is to pass a law. Was the yeah. law passed? What was the law, and was it enacted into law? And I, I'm not sure of the proper term. I hear it's a, a bill. In the U.S. in Canada and mm -hmm. in, in Ontario, it's a statute. And it become it's a bill, and once it's passed, it becomes a statute. I I don't know the if that's the same language in the states of the USA or there's um, uh, another term that should be used. I'll look into that myself. And wonderful, because basically what 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 I love about the Tennessee resolution is one of the next steps that we want to do here is. Let me find it. Um, I, I've basically taken the resolution for Tennessee and making it a a resolution for the provinces of Canada. Mm -hmm. So taking the similar wording and and creating a resolution so that when we are going, and gathering signatures on our statement of support for backing our municipalities out of the UN directive programs. At the same time, we're able to get signatures on a statement of support to back our provinces out as well. So, so I, I really liked Tennessee's wording and, um, and let me just find that for everyone. I think it's here. Because oh. I referenced, I'm referencing it in our report to, here it is. So this is Tennessee's wording. It's called a bill. Um, and there was a resolution before this too, actually. So I would word it the same way that the resolution was worded. Or similar, you know, the language was a little bit. We want to word things in a way that that make people see that this is about protecting our rights locally. It's not so much, you know, we're not against people who love the environment and want to see the environment. You know, we want to just be careful with our wording, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that is, we remove every barrier for people to to get on board with it. So this was um, what was passed there. 
Um, yeah, so you can see it go, it's against the net zero, the sustainable development, and the United Nations Agenda 21. And um, yeah, and it was for any political subdivision and every local governmental entity, um, not limited to a municipality, metropolitan, government, county, utility district, school board, school, sorry, school district, um, public building authority and development district. Uh, so, so it covers all of them. It's like none of you can take money from UN directive programs anymore or participate in those programs. All done. We're not doing this anymore in Texas. Yeah. So that's what their resolution led to being passed into law, which is great. That's what we want. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm glad we, we got that out there on this meeting too. Really exciting, important information. So especially in light of the fact that, you know, UN's chief, if you can see here on the page here, I'll make this a bit bigger. UN Chief Press Secretary, or Press, sorry, UN Chief Presses for Faster Action, says humans have two years left to save the world, guys. Oh my God. So, yeah, so we have two years left to save the world, so we better get <laughs> on it. <laughs> Uh, there we go. So they're they're just um, have absolutely lost their mind and lost the people's trust. And it even says their goal for 20, 20, 24 was to rebuild trust and restore hope in twenty twenty four because they've lost the trust of the people. And how can they restore hope? when they're putting out statements like that, right? They've completely yeah. lost it. Um, now, yet, now yet, at some point in time, we have to touch on the fact that the depressive effect this is having on young people. Uh, yep. Young people are developing hopelessness. Is it any wonder that a, young, a lot of young people get into drug abuse when you're telling them that they're doomed and it's yep. no use to have any ambition and don't think of having a, a, a partner and a child that because that would be horrible and everybody's going to be killed because it's too late. It's so sad and so true. And so many people actually have that mindset. It's and that ties in with MAID because yes, the mental health does. men, they want to bring in that as well into the MAID problem. Daniel Smith gave Trudeau a dressing down about sneaking around provincial authority um, and uh, going to municipalities directly. She just yes. gave him a dressing down. So in, in a media scrum, so um, the province is already thinking about that. Good. This can be a can... contrast, Maggie, for us to be the optimists. We present an yes. optimistic future, something that uh, encourages people to strive to be better and to produce and be good citizens and not to be fearful of the future. Absolutely. This is the ads. I, I notice it quite a bit on Facebook. I don't know if it's just me and what I research and stuff and what I'm interested in. But the ads on my Facebook this, this morning, the first three, the first one was a picture of a tent city and it says, become an addiction and community service worker. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next one was unite for nature, building a sustainable future and impact MBA, climate leadership. And it's like, this is this is what is left for humanity, according to them. You're either a climate leader or you're um, helping people deal with 
life in a tent city and addictions. You know, it's like, this is where we're going and this is why. <laughs> it's because, so I just thought it was such an interesting, you know, uh, the, the ad. We're not allowed to set, set, uh, share the news in Canada anymore. But Facebook can put this kind of propaganda and ads before us, right? So what a world, guys. <laughs> I'm glad we all found each other. So. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Everyone, Thank you all. Uh, I'm going to exit out of the past now. All Have right. And then a great week. Thank Have you, Maggie. Great weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paula. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Bless you. Good night, Maggie. Have a good weekend. Good night, everyone. Will do. I'm going to take a day off tomorrow. Good night. Good. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Vancouver, BC wants to just uh, stick around just for a minute. From the CHP, BC. Yep. Okay. You had a good interview with Rod. I I did. It's so great to talk to him. He's in um, Ottawa right now, I think. Yep. Yeah, he is. So him and I met... Um, in 2011, I ran for the Canadian Action Party, and he was running for Christian Heritage Party, and um, and a man named Roger was running for the Green Party. And it was so interesting because all of our parties had very similar monetary reform policies. So in a way, you know, we were we were all kind of like a team, right? <laughs> like, you know, you could solve a lot of the problems if you stopped borrowing from the private banks at high interest and used the Bank of Canada for what it was intended for. And uh, we really connected that, um, well, we had we shared in a very interesting experience together, I'll put it that way, right? <laughs> to to run together and and go to the different debates and it was great, yeah. So I was so happy to reconnect with him. And <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. It was, it was funny when I phoned him up. I said, have you heard about Maggie Braun? And he says, I know Maggie Braun. <laughs> I said, really? And so he told me a little background. I said, yeah. well, this is what she's doing now. You need to interview her. <laughs> oh, and he's great. What a, what a great guy. Okay, I'm just going to end the recording and then we can um, talk about what it would look like if I made my way to Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, definitely.